Hi, welcome back to this video series on program verification. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how we can use logic specification, for example, uh, implies, uh, there exists, for all, that kind of things that we need when we specify programs. So I will take an example program and then talk about how, how we can leverage such uh, logical operators um, to, to precisely specify what the program is supposed to do and then mechanically verify that. Okay, let's uh, take an example and, and, and discuss this, those topics in detail. So this example that you're seeing um, is supposed to verify whether one array is an inverse of another array. So what is the meaning of inverse? Um, the, the meaning of the inverse is like this. Let me give an example. Suppose your um, array X, the first array X is say um, made of numbers. Um, let's take it simple one, two, three, four. These are the four numbers of your array. And we say um, it is inverse of array Y if uh, Y is nothing but uh, just the reverse actually four, three, two, one. Okay. So one possible way to write an algorithm is to, to take this element, right? And compare it with this element and move this pointer in this direction, right? And move this pointer in this direction. This is basically one way to implement it. But uh, we wanted to specify this behavior more precisely. Um, we want to say when is uh, um, one array an inverse of another array and return true if x is an inverse of y, return false when x is not an inverse of y. Okay, that's basically what we wanted to achieve in this session. All right, so um, now let's get back to the program and uh, reason about it. So here is the inverse function, right, which takes two arrays, x and y, and uh, it, it expects the both arrays to be of the same length, otherwise it returns false. Um, it, there's also an assertion that at runtime it will fail when, when the program is running. Um, I'm mostly interested now in, in uh, verifying the program before running it. All right, so um, the, here is the core logic of the program, right? It's, it's basically taking the X array and compares against the Y array as I explained on my whiteboard. And uh, as soon as there's a mismatch, it says return false. Otherwise, it uh, increments the index until um, all the elements of the array are compared. Okay, and and at this point, when the program comes to line number twenty, we know for sure that um, there is no mismatch. Therefore, the program happily returns true. Okay, otherwise, it returns false. So, how do we specify this more precisely? Okay, from a user's perspective, um, well, usually the line number seven. Um, and line number eight, uh, we can put it as part of the requires contract, but in this case, um, this is put in as part of the uh, runtime contract. So let's not worry about the requires. That's the reason requires is just set to true. Okay, Means anyone can use the inverse function without any constraints on X and Y because it's going to be checked at runtime anyways. That's what basically it means here. Um, in the previous demo, we actually did um, precisely specify requires that the x length is not equal to y length. Okay, uh, in, in this case, uh, they made it a runtime decision. Okay, so uh, we can actually change it if you, if you don't like this requires to be true. We can just say um, x dot length uh, better be equal to uh, y dot length. Right? This is this is perfectly fine um, specification. So we can now actually uh, mechanically verify this and re even remove this line number, okay? So let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, it says the program satisfy the specification. Now let's spend time on the logic operators that I started talking about a little bit. Um, when do we want to return false? Uh, we want to return false when there's mismatch. Either the length is, is different or um, there is a mismatch between one array element and other other array element. That means um, the, the arrays are not inverse of each other, right? So here is the specification for the case when we will return false. Let's assume the program return false. Okay, what can we conclude? Uh, we conclude that uh, either the length are different, right? The length of X and Y are different, or there exists some number I such that, let me read this, um, such that X of I is not equal to the corresponding uh, um, y element 
but now we are reading it from the right hand side, right? That's the reason why we do x length minus one minus i. So if you find an i, there exists an i, uh, where there are a mismatch, then we know for sure uh, we should be returning false. That's basically the reason why we codify it like this. The program returning false, the, the result you see here, result, result is the keyword of the specification language, okay? If the program returns false, we can be sure either this or this happened. Um, we, if the program returns true, we can be sure that both arrays are of the same length. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, now that I have added it here, we can even remove this to, to make it um, much more simpler. We don't need this anymore because I put it as part of the requires contract. Okay, so there exists is, is good enough. Now we can also remove this, make it simpler, right? I think I need to fix one more bracket at the end, yeah. So now it should be good. Mm, hopefully, um, okay, I think it's, it's it looks good now. So let's verify this. Yeah, it satisfies the specification. So there exists is a nice uh, keyword built in as part of the Java markup language, the specification language that we have been using. Okay, so um, now comes the core part, of course, the logic part. We touched upon it in the previous uh, segment of the presentation, so I will quickly uh, go through this logic. One important thing that I didn't highlight in the previous presentation is that um, when you specify the invariant, the first two lines here, nine, line number nine and 10 are invariants, right? Loop invariants. Uh, we, we specify what are we achieving in each uh, loop iteration, okay? So what condition is true uh, before the entry of the loop? What condition is true? Uh, and the, the same condition, of course, has to be true uh, during each iteration and also during the termination of the loop, okay? So that's the reason. Uh, you see here the while loop says index is less than x dot length. In the invariant statement, we specify index is less than or equal to, which is a little bit uh, weird when you look at it from a, from the very first uh, um, viewpoint. It may look like uh, there's a bug in my specification, but it's not. This line number nine says that uh, when the loop terminates, right, index will be x dot length. That's the reason why we need to add an equal to statement. Okay. And that's basically the invariant property. The loop invariant property requires us to specify this. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, this line number 10 is basically what are we achieving in each iteration? In each iteration, uh, we have compared successfully that x of i um, from the left is equal to the corresponding y element from the right. That's basically uh, what we achieve uh, for all i less than index. Okay. That's basically the specification of the loop invariant. And uh, this line number 11 is important to, to train the tool, otherwise the tool wouldn't know whether the loops are terminating or not. There's no way for, the, for a tool to generally uh, conclude whether a loop will terminate. That's, that's a, a, a well-known uh, computer science problem. So, so um, if I remove this, right, it may still say, so let me run this now. Let me verify without that line. Okay, it says the program satisfies the specification. Of course, it is not right because uh, um, we we didn't tell the tool. Um, let, let let me make one more mistake. Uh, let's just comment this line, right? What happens now? Well, it still says the program satisfies the specification. You know why? Because the loop iteration was just executed only once. You can imagine like this. So, in order to make sure that such such mistakes are detected, you wanted to explicitly have this this line saying. Um, what is changing in the loop so that the loop will terminate. Okay, the loop will terminate x length minus index is something that is changing whenever the loop is running. And now let's see whether uh, line, uh, the effect of line comment um, will be directed. Hopefully it will be. You see here the prover cannot establish the assertion. The decrease assertion is, is violated. That's really good that the tool was able to tell us that. Okay, so now we will uncomment this and uh, um, let's make one more mistake. Okay, let's just uh, do some mistakes people make, including me, of course. Let's change the false to be true at line number 20, right? And at line number 15, let's make it true. This should confuse uh, the engine and it should detect us, detect the problem, okay? The ensures must be violated now, right? Let's hope for that. Okay, yes. It was able to tell us that the prover um, found a mistake in the ensure statement. This is nice. Uh, it, it's even detecting the line number 15 has returning true. A line number 20 returning false. So it's it's able to pinpoint the mistake that we are making here in this code. Um, that's really nice. 
this is these are all mistakes we make and testing often may not direct these kinds of problems of course uh, so we do this and we change it here and now let's verify and confirm that uh, everything is okay okay so it looks like everything is okay and uh, let me make one more mistake um, let's just put an equal to here right uh, this should also be deducted because uh, loop invariant will be violated right when the loop terminates index will become x length plus one which is violating the line number 10 specification which says index is the sum equal to x plus length so yep this is perfectly fine uh, it, it directed the prover cannot establish an assertion so this is also detected and we can now revert to this and let's make a mistake in the specification let's do this yep assertion file, file uh, violated right it cannot prove a couple of assertions that's really good we found all these interesting mistakes that that we make and um, it gets detected all right um that's basically the demo thank you very much